defeat. He's the chair of the House Freedom Caucus, Mark Meadows. Uh, Congressman Meadows, thank you for joining us this morning. As I just alluded to, uh, President Trump is up and tweeting uh, this morning, and it's about you. Uh, he said, Democrats are smiling in D.C. that the Freedom Caucus, with the help of Club for Growth and Heritage, have saved Planned Parenthood and Obamacare. Your response. Well, I mean, if, if they're applauding, they shouldn't, because I can tell you that uh, conversations over the last 48 hours are really about how we come together uh, in the Republican con uh, conference and, and try to get this over the finish line. You know, the narrative that your panel is talking about in terms of defeat, you know, this was not a final passage. This was one bill that was going to go to the Senate, get revised, and come back. If it was a final bill, that would be accurate. But here, here we are in the negotiation process. And really, George, what we're looking at here is, is trying to make sure that we do one thing, get premiums down for all Americans. And as we look at that, that remains our primary but Congressman, focus. the president says he's going to move on, and he's blaming you for saving Planned Parenthood, saving Obamacare. Well, I mean, at this particular point, I can tell you, no one has been more uh, self-critiquing than, uh, than me. I can tell you. I've, I've looked at all of this. I said, you know, could I have spent a little bit more time? Uh, should I have uh, spent more time with the Tuesday group, more time with Democrats to find some consensus? And so as we look at this today, uh, this is not the end of the debate. You know, that this is like uh, I had one of my friends call me the other day. He says, it's like saying that Tom Brady lost at halftime. You know, we're, we're not. We, we may be in overtime, but I can tell you at the, at the very end of the day, the most valuable player will be President Trump on this because he will deliver. He's committed to the American people, and we're committed to helping I got, him I get there. Say, I got to say, Congressman, it doesn't sound like you and the president are on the same page here. He's not saying that. He's saying you saved Obamacare, you saved Planned Parenthood, and he's ready to move on. Well, I, I know that he's he's moving on, and as he, he looks at that, it's incumbent upon us. I can tell you we had discussions with some of the, the more moderate uh, members of our conference who were prepared to vote no. And, uh, and so really it's incumbent upon those two groups, the conservatives and the moderates, to come together, hopefully in the coming days, uh, to find some consensus, to present something to the president that, that certainly not only gets him 216 votes, but hopefully 235 votes. And as we look at this. You know, George, you, you know, you have a long history in the White House. You know how this works. To, to put a stake in it today would not be accurate, and nor would it be the narrative that this is a great failure for the president. He's done more in 65 days than any uh, president in modern history, and so uh, let's put it in real perspective where we are. Well, Congressman, I'm not the one putting a stake in it. I think it's the president who's put the stake in it right there by saying he wants to move on, move on to tax reform and other issues. Chairman of your energy... Uh, and I do, and I, I plan... I. And I plan to help him with tax reform. I can tell you that, you know, he, he's got his team working on tax reform right now. And in terms of government funding, I heard your panelists talk about that. There's, there's not going to be an issue there. This is about one thing. It's getting premiums and making sure people covered. It's making sure that we fulfill our campaign promise, and, and ultimately that's where we'll Let, be. Let's talk about those issues right now. You said last month on tax reform that tax reform actually depended on repealing Obamacare. You said, I don't see how you can have one without the other. So do you have to repeal Obamacare before you move on to tax reform, in your view? Well, you don't have to, but it certainly makes it easier. You know, when we really look at, at lowering the taxes, and part of the reason why it was planned in this, this measure was looking at, at, at changing a baseline and actually uh, assisting with that tax reform effort. Uh, but I, I fully expect that what we're going to see is not only a real tax reform, but other measures that come along. And I, I still believe that there is a good chance, uh, if, if moderates and conservatives can come together, that we repeal and replace Obamacare, bring premiums down, cover more people, and yet here we are. Uh, you're right. Uh, I've, I've said that this does that make the task more difficult without a doubt. You say real tax reform. Does that mean that any tax cuts must be fully paid for? You're not going to pass, pass tax cuts that, don't, uh, that aren't matched with other revenue increases? 
or spending cuts? You know, you're asking, you're asking a fiscal conservative, so you're asking all the good questions, and that, that's really where it comes down to. Does it have to be what they would say revenue neutral, or do you have to have an offset like with the border adjustment tax? I think those are going to be the two questions. I think there's been a lot of flexibility in terms of some of my con uh, uh, contacts and conservatives in terms of not making it totally offset. And, and that's a move that we're trying to do to provide real relief and economic growth. When we start to grow the economy at 4, 4.1%, it actually not only increases wages, but it puts uh, more uh, money in, in Americans' uh, pockets uh, each and every day. And so tax reform and lowering taxes uh, you know, will create and generate more income. And so we're looking at those where the fine is, but uh, does it have to be fully offset? Uh, my personal response is, is no. Oh, well, that's, that seems like a bit of a shift. How about that border adjustment tax that Speaker Ryan has talked about? Can you support it? You know, really right now, we haven't taken any official position on the border adjustment tax. Uh, you know, we'll be talking not only to the speaker on that. We've, we've had a number of meetings with Chairman Brady and others, but we'll be talking to the administration as well, as well on what they want to see. I know they have some specific ideas, and as we look to tax reform, uh, the, the big debate will be over that border adjustment tax, but we're in the information gathering mode right now. Uh, and, and I can tell you what m most Americans need and want. They need lower intrusion from the federal government in their lives. They need lower taxes so that they can take more of their paycheck home. And I know that President Trump and, and those in the, the GOP conference are committed to making sure that that happens. And, and on the government funding, you said it's not going to be a problem. And our Senator Schumer is standing by. He's going to be coming up next. He said if the president includes funding for the border wall, it's, it's a non-starter with Democrats in the Senate. Also has talked about uh, now the possibility that you would try to defund Planned Parenthood in this government funding initiative. Uh, do you need that in order to pass government funding in April? Well, I think what we need from uh, the, the Senator Schumer is, is really a willing partner. You know, on this Obamacare repeal and replacement, before he even saw a plan, he said he was against it. So what we need is some honest dialogue back and forth. Maybe he can comment on that. But to come out and say that he wasn't going to help before he even saw a replacement plan uh, really sends the wrong narrative. Americans want to make sure that we work. I know I reached out to five different Democrats in terms of this repeal and replacement to say, well, what do you need for your district and and that's what we've got to do and and when we when we look at at a supplemental what the president is going to find is is a great flexibility with regards to the concern and moderate members of the GOP conference uh, to hopefully get, get us